Thank you, Regina. And thank you, Mike. And thank you, Andy. I am so, so grateful to be here today. I was 12 years old. I was on stage at Encore Elementary School in Massapequa, Long Island, New York. It was my sixth grade play. And it got time to say my lines, and I froze. What seemed like 30 minutes to me. Finally, thank God, they skipped over me. <laughs> and no one remain, remembered those 15 or 20 seconds, except for me, for the next 40 years. What's your biggest fear? Think about it. What are you most scared of? What's your biggest fear? Write it down. Napoleon Hill, in my favorite book, Thinking for Rich. Apologies, Mike. My second favorite book, Thinking for Rich. <laughs> Enumerates humans' six biggest fears. Fear of criticism. Fear of old age. Fear of ill health. Fear of the loss of someone you love fear of poverty, and fear of death. But I will tell you, Napoleon Hill completely missed one big fear, fear of public speaking. <laughs> that was my biggest fear up until recently. In fact, if I had to give a speech in front of more than two people, I had my index cards. There's no way I was gonna freeze again. So what's your biggest fear? And what baby steps can you take to overcome it? Let me tell you my story. It's July 2016. I'm on the phone with a good friend of mine, a health coach, because I had made a big decision. In December 2015, I had decided to shut down my hedge fund. So I had had an aha moment. Yeah, I know it sound, may sound like a cliche, but it's true. I had found my true purpose on earth, which was to be a prosperity coach, to help people become financially free, so they don't have to work if they don't want to, to work with their money mindset. So I'm on the phone with Kiersey, it's July 2016, and this conversation becomes a life-changing event in its own right. Because at the end of the conversation, after I'm picking Kiersey's brain, asking her all these questions, she says, Joel, Will I see you in October? Why, Kiersey? She says, because playing the Matrix is coming to New York. I said, playing the what? She said, Joel, you don't get notes from the universe? I said, no, Kiersey, I didn't. She said, Joel, you don't know Mike Dooley, Mr. Universe? So I start racking my brain. And I get this picture in my head. <laughs> so she tells me all about Mike and all about notes from the universe. So I go, in October 2016, to Playing the Matrix. And a few things happened at Playing the Matrix. I don't believe in coincidences. I only believe in synchronicities. You heard from Regina that I started my career as an actuary. So Mike starts talking about his background and how he started his career as an accountant at Price Waterhouse. And everyone knows the difference between an accountant and an actuary, right? An actuary looks at his feet when he talks to you, an accountant looks at your feet. They say an accountant is an actuary with charisma. And besides that synchronicity, <laughs> besides that synchronicity, we also had something else in common. 
So Mike starts talking about infinite possibilities. And again, I'd done no research before going to play in the Matrix. I knew nothing about my age. And he starts talking about infinite possibilities in chapter one, thoughts become things. And I got chills because this was my email signature in 2013. And at the bottom, you can see thoughts are things from my second favorite book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And besides that, the secret also changed my life. In February of 2008, I started reading The Secret. And I read this passage about this guy who thought about this feather. And every morning he woke up, he thought about this feather. And every night before he went to sleep, he thought about this feather, day after day. And then one day, he's walking down the street, and he sees on the sidewalk the exact feather that he had thought about in his mind. A thought had become a thing. And then it said, you try. So I don't know why, the first thing that popped into my head was cotton balls, pure white cotton balls. I don't know why. <laughs> but every morning I woke up in February 2008, I thought about cotton balls. And every night before I went to sleep, I thought about cotton balls day after day. <laughs> my daughters, Lauren and Morgan, were two and four at the time in 2008. That's Morgan on the left and Lauren on the right. And we used to go jogging. Well, I used to go jogging. I put them in a double jogging stroller. And we used to go to this park, and I'd run up this hill, and we'd get to the playground, and I'd get a break. I'd let them out of the stroller, and I'd push them on these swings. I'd push them down the slide. They'd get back into the double jogging stroller, and I'd run home. Well, it was May 31st, 2008. And we got to that park, and I'd run up that hill, and we'd get to the playground, I'm letting them out of the stroller, and I saw all over the playground, tons of cotton balls. A thought had become a thing. And then the secret says, you can go onto their website and print out a check, which I did, from the Gratitude Bank of the Universe. And I put that check up on my ceiling, and I said, I don't know how and I don't know why, but I do know that the same energy that creates cotton balls creates money. And every day and every night, I said, I don't know how and I don't know why. Now, Mike just talked about taking action. And I will tell you, I took some action over the next 18 months. But I still believe to this day, you don't have to work hard to be rich and successful. And so in January 2010, my boss calls me into a conference room. He said, Joel, you had a good year last year. He slips a piece of paper to me for my bonus check. I flipped it over, it's within $1,000 of the check I had up on the ceiling for the last 18 months. Multiples of what I'd ever made in my life. A thought had become a thing and the secret had changed my life too. So now at the end of playing the Matrix, I learned a lot about the cursed house, about acting as if, about visualization. So at the end of playing the Matrix, I had somebody take a picture of me acting as if I was speaking in front of a large group of people, kind of like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Crazy, but not good. Because if you act as if, it does work. So then, playing The Matrix ends, and I took some baby steps. I heard Mike had joined Toastmasters, so I did too. The guy who needed no cards for every single presentation he gave, gave his first Toastmasters presentation, and they said, you can't use no cards. What? <laughs> but I've now given 25 presentations, including the most important one last year in March, at my daughter Lauren's Bas Mitzvah, where I was able to speak in front of 200 people for 17 minutes without no cards. And it took some more baby steps. So after Train the Trainer last year in May, I checked out meetup.com. And surprisingly, there was not an Infinite Possibilities meetup in Manhattan, New York. So I set, set one up. And we now have more than 100 members of Infinite Possibilities Training, a meetup that I set up last year. And I trained 14 people 
and I introduced a one-hour introduction to more than 50 people. And I took another baby step. On page 26 of your trainer's manual, you have tech people who can help you. I didn't have a website a year ago today, but I reached out to Appio Hunter. He may be the most giving Ippy I've met. And he helped me set up Solomore.com, where you can now sign up for infinite possibilities, an introduction, a full day course, or even four weeks at a time. You can not only sign up, but you can even pay online. You can do this. You are the allower of the good you long time ago created. And it is high time that you allow the good that you long time ago created to manifest into your life. I believe in you. Thank you.